the multivalent subunit vaccines present multiple copies of a given peptide or a mixture of peptides to the immune system a number of techniques are used to develop multivalent subunit vaccines now let us talk about technique 1 in this technique a solid matrix which is particle in nature is attached with monoclonal antibodies these monoclonal antibodies are then bounded with or saturated with desired immuno dominant b cell epitope and t cell epitope as a result a solid matrix antibody antigen or smaa complex is formed the b cell epitope and t cell epitope are also called as antigenic determinant the b cell epitope and t cell epitope are peptide in nature the solid matrix antibody antigen or smaa complex is then used as vaccine the smaa complex is a multivalent complex because the smaa complex contains different monoclonal antibodies and both b cell epitopes and t cell epitopes these monoclonal antibodies can bind to a mixture of peptides or proteins the solid matrix antibody antigen or smaa complex induce humoral and cell mediated responses the smaa complex is particle in nature the particulate nature of smaa complex facilitates phagocytosis of itself by phagocytic cell so we can say that the particle nature of smaa complex increases its capacity to induce immune system now let us talk about technique 2 which is used to develop multivalent subunit vaccines in this technique first detergent extracted membrane antigens or antigenic peptides are collected the collected detergent extracted membrane antigens or antigenic peptides are then mixed with quill a and detergent quill a is a glycoside as a result of this mixing an iscom is formed iscom stands for immuno stimulating complexes iscom is also called as lipid carrier the protein antigen are present at the center of iscom the iscom can function as vaccine the collected detergent extracted membrane antigens can be mixed with a suspension of phospholipids to form liposome or lipid vesicle the liposome has a phospholipid bilayer to this phospholipid bilayer protein antigens are incorporated the protein antigens are incorporated into the phospholipid bilayer in such a way that the protein antigens hydrophilic residues are exposed the liposome containing protein antigen are also used as vaccine the collected detergent extracted membrane antigens or antigenic peptides are first mixed with detergent and then the detergent is removed from the collected detergent extracted membrane antigens or antigenic peptides as a result micelles are formed every protein in the micelle orient itself with its hydrophilic residues towards the aqueous environment and the hydrophobic residues at the center as a result every protein in the micelle excludes its interaction with the aqueous environment the micelles can also be used as vaccine now let us discuss about iscom delivery of antigen into the cell 
the ISCO m having central protein antigens is fused with a cell the fusing ISCO m containing protein antigens to a cell looks like this due to this fusion the protein antigens are delivered into the cytosol of the cell in the cytosol the proteasomes are present the protein antigens go through proteasome and produce degraded protein antigens the er of the cell has tap or transporter associated with antigen processing the degraded protein antigens are then transported through tap into the er lumen the er membrane has class 1 mhc molecules the degraded protein antigens then bind to the class 1 mhc molecules the degraded protein antigen bound class 1 mhc molecule then go through several other steps of transport and reach to the plasma membrane of the cell the degraded protein antigen bound class 1 mhc molecule then induces a cell mediated response the membrane proteins from the various pathogens including influenza virus measles virus hepatitis b virus and hiv have been incorporated into micelles liposomes and iscoms and are currently being assessed as potential vaccines please like subscribe and share